Welcome! In this video, we are going to look at GraphQL for Gatsby. Now, GraphQL is a specification for querying data. What a specification means is that it is some general guidelines on how to query data in a really efficient way. Now, this specification was created by the developers at Facebook. However, you don't actually have to use Facebook's implementation of GraphQL. You could build your own GraphQL servers, or you could choose from a number of different GraphQL implementations across a number of different languages. So GraphQL is really just some general guidelines on how we could query data. Now, Gatsby always uses GraphQL whenever you want to get data from within Gatsby. This is nice because we have a really efficient way of getting data, regardless of what kind of data that is. Now, at the most core level, Gatsby can call GraphQL APIs directly. So, if your data is already set up in a GraphQL server or has a database with a GraphQL server built into it, then Gatsby has no problem getting that data. However, a lot of the data that we need to use on the web is not already in a GraphQL API format. And although these are not terribly hard to set up yourself, it can be a lot of work that luckily when working with Gatsby isn't necessary. Gatsby's plugin architecture allows you to get non-GraphQL data into Gatsby and then use GraphQL to query it once you have it there. So if your data is in a CSV, Markdown, traditional database, or one of the headless CMSs like WordPress, you can use one of the Gatsby plugins to pull that data in regardless of what format it is in, and then once it's in Gatsby, you could use GraphQL, the general specification, for querying that data. This is a really great architecture that makes all of our content and where it comes from kind of not matter because once it gets into Gatsby, we always query it and get that data in the same way. Now, what does a GraphQL query actually look like? Here is a high-level example of what a query in Gatsby might look like using GraphQL. You can see we use the word query and then give our query a name. And then inside of the curly braces, we say what content we want to get. So where you see content here, that's going to change depending on what you want. Now, one of the strengths of GraphQL is that it's really good at setting up relationships between things. And edges here shows that we have a collection of connected items with a relationship. And then when we go down inside of that to the actual node, this is the single item that we usually want. Now, it's possible to create queries where you get a node directly, but in Gatsby, we'll often see that we're getting collections of related content. Now, arguably, one of the most exciting things about GraphQL is that we can be very specific about the exact content that we want and only get that content. So, for example, here we have two specific properties listed out. However, our original data might have had 20 different properties, but we don't need all of those. So we could create a very specific query here that gets us exactly what we need and nothing else. Now, here's an example of a common GraphQL query with Gatsby. We see here that we're naming it all pages and we come in and instead of content, we're getting all site page. This is the default way that Gatsby looks through any of the hard coded pages that we've created. Then our edges are going to be all of the pages that it gets and node will be the specific page that we want. Now pages created this way in Gatsby all have a unique ID. So we can see we're getting that and the path or the slug to that particular page. Pages have way more information available. However, in this query, we're just going to get their ID and path. Now, what happens once we make this query? Our GraphQL queries in Gatsby are going to return JSON to us. So we could see our previous request here. What we're going to get back is an object with a data property. And then we see all site pages, edges, just like we defined it. And then we see our specific nodes within that that have the ID and path that we requested. So we could see that we have a 404 page that Gatsby automatically generates for us. We have an about page that we created and we have a home page here. Now we will get real comfortable making GraphQL queries and you don't need to go off and learn it on your own. We'll kind of pick it up as we go here with building stuff with Gatsby. However, I do want to point out that GraphQL can filter and sort too. Again, it's a really robust specification. And of course, when you're working with data, you have to be able to filter and sort. So here's a simple example where we get the newest page created. We could see that when we call all site page inside of parentheses, we tell it that we want to sort by order descending according to the ID field. So we could change this field to date or something else if we want. And we could also see that we're limiting it to just one page back. 
Then when we get this back, we would see our normal ID and path for that page, but we would only be getting one and it would be the most recent one according to its ID. Now filtering and sorting is also something we're going to go into more depth with later as we start building more complex sites with Gatsby, but I just wanna show you at the outset here that it is possible. Now when it comes to learning GraphQL, it's really fortunate that Gatsby ships with a tool called Graphical. And this is a web interface that hooks up to all of the GraphQL options in Gatsby and gives us a nice interface for testing and playing around with queries before we throw them into our code. Now normally Gatsby Develop will throw up a localhost 8000 where you could view your site as you're building it, and if you do underscore 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 GraphQL, you will pull up this graphical interface that's connected to your live Gatsby site or your development Gatsby site. Now this tool is constantly evolving, but here's a screenshot of what you're going to see, and we'll look at this again in more depth through more examples as we go on. However, on the left-hand side here, we've got our explorer that shows all of the possible pieces of content that we could get using GraphQL inside of Gatsby. Now you can see that we've selected inside of all site page ID and path, and then in the central column here, query my query, all site page, this is going to actually be the query that we want. When you hit play button at the top there, in the next column over, we can see our data in the JSON format exactly as what we looked at before. Then off to the right, you could see all of the schema and navigate things in another way to see everything that's available before you even start to build your queries. This tool is really great and has a lot of autocomplete and other cool features built in. And as I said, over the rest of this course, you're gonna get really comfortable with this tool and learning GraphQL as you go along. Now, once we have our queries, for example, query my query here in the middle, where do we put it? There are a few places in our Gatsby sites where we will commonly put GraphQL queries. One of the first ones is going to be gatsbynode.js. This file is where we will commonly put dynamically created pages. So if we're pulling from a bunch of list of pages or posts, we will dynamically create a static page for each one of them in our Gatsby Node.js, and we'll use a GraphQL query to get that list of pages or posts or whatever it is that we wanna dynamically create. Now we'll also commonly use GraphQL queries inside of page templates. Page templates we haven't really looked at much, but we will get into them in more depth very soon. And a page template could, for example, take a slug based on the URL and then run a GraphQL query within that template to figure out what page content to display. Now, again, this is run before the build time or during the build time, so you're still going to get a static site, but you'll find that we do put GraphQL queries inside of our templates so that we can keep the organization of what we're getting and how we want to render it all together, which is a really cool, efficient system. Of course, it's also possible to break these queries out into their own files as your sites get bigger and bigger and you want to manage them independently. However, the third place that we'll see a GraphQL query is really any component within our Gatsby site that needs it. So there is a slightly different way of getting GraphQL queries in our Gatsby node and page templates than there is in other components. And that is because when you're not inside of a page template, you can't get dynamic content and use variables in the same way. However, there are ways to run static queries from components, and we will look at those as well. However, these three places, if we start off just looking at some examples of using GraphQL in each of these, you'll begin to get a really good feel of how you could use GraphQL all over the place with all sorts of kind of data in Gatsby in a really consistent way. Now, up next, we're going to look at some examples of GraphQL in the Gatsby starters. And these starters are great not just for what we have looked at so far of learning how to build some pages and use components and things, but they're also great because they demonstrate how to pull in different types of data and write the corresponding GraphQL queries that go along with them. Before we close out, I'll mention one last thing. You could also use GraphQL on the front end of your Gatsby sites. We've talked exclusively up to this point about how to use GraphQL to get data loaded into Gatsby during the build process. So you still have a static front site that you launch. However, on that static front end, you could also make GraphQL queries and pull in dynamic APIs and interact with things once that is live. So this takes it from a traditional or truly literal static site and into a more dynamic, one like people are often used to building with JavaScript. 
Now, this is a little bit beyond the scope of this course when we're just getting started, but I do want to mention it so that you know it's possible, and in future courses, we will delve into this in more depth because it allows for some really cool interactions and, of course, much more interactive and richer, powerful Gatsby sites.